All right, so welcome everybody to what might be the final part. I think we're gonna settle this, this whole video series in three parts. I don't think we're gonna need four. Um, if you hear some musical accompaniment to this one, you're hearing Fallout 4 in the background. Um, so where we're at, uh, if you haven't seen the previous parts of the video, uh, go, go watch the previous parts of the video. Um, so I've got the other door attached. We've got the cockpit all figured out at this point and a little more weathering done. Um, I'm going to, I still haven't painted the frames for this HUD, but I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna give them both just a, a little transparent green um, just to make them look HUD-like. I gave, cause I was painting something else. So I gave the canopy rails a black coat real quick. So it's got a black undercoat. And I made sure to outline with the parafilm where these control items are to make it part of the rails. Um, so we're just about ready now to start the priming process so we can do our painting process, which will be fun. Um, I decided to just keep going with the Marines. We're not gonna go Air Force with this one. We're gonna leave it Marines. Um, I think the Marine paint job will be fun to weather up too. So here's kind of where we're at. So cutting those J hooks really was important to get these, these canopy pieces to fit properly and make everything fit and to have it all kind of cinched down the way it needs to. And you can see here now that everything does fit nice and flush. One last test fit with the rotor once it's on there and it fits right down on top of the fuselage. We've got some more missiles to build, but we'll do that, you know, I'll do that on camera and show you how easy they are from Edward to build. So I'm going to just uh, do that transparent green and glue these canopy pieces in place. And then we'll get to the priming. I'm gonna give, what you're not gonna see is I'm gonna give a real quick rub down with some plain old rubbing alcohol, just to make sure there's no uh, fingerprint oils or contaminants or anything on the plastic before we start, and that'll be it. done with the initial primer coat and some panel line pre-shading. Uh, you guys might have seen it. I'll probably put it in text anyway as I'm editing. I don't know what went on if my, um, my primer is old or something. Had a lot of trouble shooting it through the new airbrush. Um, finally what I did was I just adjusted the needle and, and pulled it out a little bit from the end of the airbrush and got some better coverage but uh, I might um, I don't know, maybe it's my inability to use a new tool. Um, I'm not saying it's, it's not that, it could be that, but had a lot of trouble doing that. So it's not completely even all across the model, but you know what, we're gonna work with that because that's gonna help 
make the paint job look a little worn in, a little weathered, and not even across the whole model anyway. But I'm going to set this aside for now, and I'm gonna work on the rotor. It's, you know, an interesting design. I think what they intended with, with that, these outer sections would be movable control surfaces. So I think I'm gonna do this in three different sets. We're gonna have the rotor hub, which is gonna be one thing, and I'm planning to use alclads, which is why I did it with the, the gloss black base. I'm gonna leave these sections in gloss black, and then I'm gonna do these outer sections with um, a half glass five finish. Uh, with This time I'm gonna try Mission Models half glass gray. You, if you remember last time I did uh, Hatakas and I was not happy with it at all. Um, I don't know if this is gonna be any better. Uh, it still looks a little bright silvery, but I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to give this um, um, kind of a metallic finish, like I said, without clads. I'm going to layer a couple things to make it look just unique and different. But I'm going to get the rotor kind of done and let the helicopter itself sit for a little before I work on it. So I'm going to get this ready for painting uh, on the outer areas of the rotor blade. We are up to the the painting part and uh, the instructions are not a real representation of the colors that the Marines use then they just tell you uh, olive drab and it, when you get into it the real color is actually uh, FS34079 which is field green um, now model master not mod, model master um, there's Game of Thrones model master makes this in uh, enamel, but I wanted an acrylic, and the best I could find was uh, AK Interactive, and this is their um, acrylic uh, lacquer uh, line, and you know, I wanted to try this anyway, and, and I ended up buying their high compatibility thinner, just to use it, their high compatibility thinner is awesome. So I'm looking forward to using this, and that's kind of why I'm going to paint the green color first. I'm just going to do the whole camouflage uh, freehand. Um, since the new airbrush does great fine line work. Um, so this is actually a really, 
really small little containers. Uh, what is the... Yeah, third of a fluid ounce. Um, so tiny, tiny little amounts of paint at a time. But uh, they're supposed to be really good. So I'll use this and then I'll probably use um, Vallejo's or, or uh, Model Air's for the other colors I'm going to do on this. Hope you enjoyed the paint job and whatever music I will edit in there. Um, so I, I really enjoyed using the AK paint. Um, the actual paints I went with were the AK Interactive uh, Field Green. I did uh, Light Ghost Gray from um, it's actually the Surface Primer, but it's you know it's it's by Vallejo, and then uh, Tamiya NATO Black because NATO Black you know NATO Black has a finish that's, that's very different from other blacks. It's it's kind of it's got a you can put it on light and get kind of that faded black look, or you can put it on heavy and get that nice um, flat black look. And of course, we're gonna gloss this all anyway, but um, I think the colors really went well. Now, if you wanna compare the actual uh, pattern in the instructions, 
I, I freehanded it so that I would have the freedom to change it up a little bit. For instance, I added a little bit of green to the back because according to the instructions, it was just two slices of black and the gray. And I just, I wanted, you know, I wanted to add green to, to the back of it because I like the look of it. Um, I really like the colors together. I like the way the camouflage came out. You know, personally, I'm not sure why we have these colors on the bottom. I mean, if you're thinking about it, it should be just an all gray on the bottom or something like that, but whatever. This is the way the Marines painted their helicopters uh, in the 80s. I'm ready to go for the gloss coat now. Um, all the detail painting that needs to be done, like uh, these actuators we put in there, I'm gonna put a yellow zinc chromate um, on the inner door surfaces and stuff like that. We're gonna do the skids, and I don't know yet. I haven't figured out where we're gonna do the skids. God, all that stuff we're gonna do later. Um, I just, I wanna get working. So, color choices on the rotor, I'm not happy with them, to tell you the truth. So, I, you know, my, my method of, my train of thought here was that since these are, all, you know, we're, we're pretending they're, they're moving control surfaces, which I think on the Stingbat, a conceptual design, they were. They could rotate to increase or, or decrease the amount of lift and, and help maneuver the helicopter. So I put the red stripes on both ends. Um, as you know, they would they would move. Uh, the whole the whole thing would be composites, but you know, I just I did something I don't know off the top of my head that would be kind of standard composites, and then as these as the outer edges, because these would always be these inner blades would always be sort of over parts of the helicopter for the most part, and then the have glass finish over the parts that would be not covered by the helicopter as they're spinning. Um, I don't know, it looks a little frou-frou, you know what I mean? But it is what it is. When it's dulled down, it might look a little bit better. You saw the, the different variations and coatings that I gave the rotor hub. Um, I'm not sure, maybe I should've just gone black for it, but I don't know, when it's all, when it's all toned down with um, flat, I think it'll look a lot better. Um, I certainly didn't want it to look like metal, but Again, you know, a lot of the have glass paints that are out there just give you this very shiny metal look and don't accurately reflect the darkness of the paint. I, I actually added a little bit of Mission Models Gunship Gray to to the uh, the have glass gray as I was going to try to tone it down. And it is toned down significantly from what it was. I don't know if you noticed during the course of the painting. Um, I might, I don't know, we'll work on that. Um, but uh, I'd like to add, just because it's pretty plain, you know, add some decals, maybe some do not steps along along the edges of these moving portions of the rotor blades and stuff. We'll see. All right, so look look at this. Look at this, folks. Uh, what are these decals? Over 20 years old. A couple coats. One of uh, Microsol and one of Solvacet. And they are down on the gloss coat like they were just printed by an aftermarket um, decal producer. Can you believe that? Awesome. Um, awesome. And you know, I, the funny part is then I went and I was going to use some do not steps from a, a newer Hasegawa kit and I decided the, the, um, the font was too small. So I took it off and it, it gave me a big white blob on there. I tried to get it off. It won't come off. I tried to very lightly scrape it and it started to, um, expose some paint underneath, right? So the old testers decals worked flawlessly. Um, and the modern Hasegawa decals are the ones that gave me a problem that I have to fix now. Um, so we're done with painting. We're done with the initial gloss coat. We're done with the decals. Um, and I, you know what? Here's another thing that I need to point out. So the instructions clearly show you um, which represent flat black, olive drab, and the gray. And unfortunately, I don't know where the box is. The box has them reversed. So if you look at the box art, those colors are reversed. And these decals are obviously based on the box art, uh, especially these Marines markings there. Uh, what's really cool though is if you take a look, the uh, printing on the decals is just dark enough. I don't know if it's gonna show up on camera right. It's just dark enough that you can still read. I think when we put the dull coat on, you'll be able to see it. You can still read the lettering over the black. Now, I don't know if it would be like that if I used a regular flat black, but using the NATO black, which has that kind of uh, chalky, lighter black look 
uh, really was a good plan because the black markings are standing out just enough from the black uh, paint, which is which is going to be good. Uh, I improvised a lot. You know, they, there were markings for the red ones for the army helicopter. Um, there are some that were used on this one, and then there were some that were left over, and I, I wanted to really deck it out. You know, since it didn't exist anyway, we have freedom to do stuff. Um, I was going to even throw some other ones on there, but I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave it as is. Uh, there were some I didn't use because I thought they were kind of useless um, and and dumb looking. There were some I repositioned, so I I figure this is a good enough markup. Um, without being too distracting from the subject itself. So, and this is what we've got. I completed a, a full aircraft filter with this guy right here, which I, now it's probably hard to tell just looking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, in the corner, put a little, a little screen capture of what it looked like before I did the filter. It's very subtle, but um, it really sort of, as it was going on, you could really see how it sort of puts the colors together. It puts a little bit of a wash in, in some little places that I'm gonna leave. I, I didn't put it on very thick. I, I I really put it on very light, just enough to apply the, the filter overall. I'm very happy with the way it all went on. So now another gloss coat, and then once that gloss coat is dry and cured, we can go ahead and start our, our real weathering. I also, while I was at it, decided, what the hell with it, let's go. I, I mixed up a different, uh, even darker half glass and just redid all those those portions you can really kind of see the remnants of that that tan which is gonna help with the weathering and give kind of like dirty edges i don't know if it's showing up on camera very well but let's get going with the second gloss coat and then we'll be back for for actual weathering
you know, that Windsor Newton, um, that, that mat is like the best mat I've ever worked with. And the helicopter itself is done. The rotor is done. The only thing left to do really is the, the missiles. And I'm working on those now. They are lots of little decals. Oh my gosh. But, um, here's the rotor, which I'm very happy with. Um, finally, <laughs> kind of. Uh, my, my favorite point is here of an aircraft though. So you can see the mat is matte. It's all good. We've got all, lots of our little chips with primer showing. Um, so now it's time to unmask the canopy. I cannot tell you how many times I've broken these struts. So I'm just gonna try to be real careful doing it. Um, we'll start with the pilot's canopy back here. And power film's coming off real nice. Unfortunately, the canopy is also coming off. It's ungluing. Um, let's see. Can I just peel? It's coming off so well. No. No, it's not coming off that easily. But I'm so excited to see how this all looks underneath everything. looks pretty clear. It looks like the parafilm is sticking to that top layer of the gauzy. Um, which is weird, has never happened before. It's actually peeling off some of that clear that's on top of it, which is just bizarre. What is going on here? That is absolutely insane. Okay, all right, we can fix it though. We can make this work. We've got a little work to touch up that over there. I'm not sure what we'll do with it yet, but we'll do something with it. But we've got uh, one canopy unmasked. Unfortunately, some fit issues there that I didn't, I wasn't really aware of at first, but oh well, we're, we're at where we're at now. You can still see the canopies are still really clear, look really good. Um, if I burnish this down a little bit, I think it'll be okay. Yeah, um, but we can still see the controls in there. A great view into the cockpits. So, this came out pretty good. All right. Um, I'm not going to attach the rotor just yet because I want to get all the work with the weapons done first. Now I have one that might be ready. Um, it's a little tacky. So we'll wait on that and then we'll kind of see where we're at. The first brimstone is ready and boy are these, these are work, but they're worth it. Look at that cute little guy. Uh, incredibly detailed, very nice, ready to attach the first one. I still have many more to finish. This is not attached. It's just sitting on there because I can't wait. But they uh, go very nice with the rest of the model. You know, it's gonna be a really nice addition once I get them all glued on and everything. Well, it doesn't wanna sit, but uh, they'll sit on those rails very nicely, waiting to go, you know, come on, just sit for me, just for a minute. Come on, be a good missile. There we go. Uh, they'll look really good with the rest of the model. Um, so we got one down. What I wanna do now, the reason I scribed this whole panel line right there, that whole thing is because I'm gonna make it into a sensor. We've got little sensors underneath here that I need to paint and kind of animate some life into there. Um, and yeah, you can see, even with the canopy problems, you can see all the controls in there very nicely. So cool. Um, but I'm gonna make that, um, I'm just gonna do like a, a goldish orange 
um, with some gloss on it and then the bottom we'll do some fancy looking colors and it'll give you know the appearance that I'm looking for oh my lord we are finally done with this helicopter it has taken me a lot longer than I thought it was going to but um I'm mostly happy with the finished product um there's a, a few a bunch of things I would I would change if I could but let's take a look so I've mounted the rotors and yay it spins it's kind of squeaky um, I'm really glad that I decided to mount the missiles externally so you could see them. That, I think, really adds a little something to it. Um, I know that there's going to be a handful of people who are going to say, I, I shouldn't have added that, I should have just left it. But, you know, you, you get to see the ordinance this way. You wouldn't get to see that otherwise. You, you really wouldn't. So, um, I'm glad that the canopies still give so much open area to see all of the little detailing that went into the cockpit um, you know it just it would have been so so empty had we had we not decided to put all those decals and other um, you know just little painting effects in there and um, you know and it, without those canopies you know uh, it, it would have been such a waste of time to put all those effects in there because you wouldn't have seen anything so you can really I mean you can see all that stuff through those, those big wide canopies. Um, now the lighting's not great, but you know you can you can really see a lot of it. So I you know uh, I'm happy with the 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 primer showing the chipped primer. I'm also not happy with it. Um, really like it on the rotor blades. Um, I like it partially on the fuselage. I mean, I wanted I wanted it to look used. I really wanted to show a workhorse in action. I don't know if you can see a little bit of dry brushing I did, show a little bit of uh, wear on the red areas, but um, I'm not happy with the black rotor hub. It just sort of happened that way. It wasn't supposed to be, but I, I got tired of redoing it, honestly. So you can see I put in um, a, a sensor housing there, you know, with that kind of pinkish tinted gold lens that you see very often on helicopters. And then underneath, we did one in, in a metallic blue sort of and, and one in the same pinkish gold color. Um, underneath has a fair amount of wear and tear as well. It just, I think it came out really nice. That's a very, you know, very old kit. Like we know, like we said, um, it really put me on a helicopter kick, though. So right now I have two different Apaches and three different Cobras ordered and on the way. So that I can kind of build them and compare them to this. I, I, I really did enjoy doing this one, though. It, I mean, it was a labor of love. It was a lot of work. Uh, a couple things I, I wish that I had thought to put on now. Some navigation lights would be cool to have. Um, because even stealthy helicopters would still be required you know to fly in the united states to have uh, nav lights on um, i also uh, before i put the final matte coat on i, I took some uh, chalk pastel and took a q-tip basically and put it around the exhaust areas a little bit and i'm not sure if you can even tell oh, i think you can a little um, it's not just that alclad jet exhaust that's around there but i thought it, it was a nice I, th I thought it was just a nice touch those decals really, I mean, 31-year-old decals, they really settled in and the carrier film pretty much disappeared. Look, They look great um, on this, you know, in the midst of everything. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm overall very happy with how this turned out. Um, I love the Edward Brimstones. Um, pain in the ass, but worth it. Uh, very nice little missiles to have on there. I hope you guys enjoyed the process as much as I did. Lots of spur of the moment choices um, to, you know, made here as I went along. Weird, weird goings on with the canopies, you know, with um, with the, the gauzy coating being sort of stripped off a little bit and peeled off, but it happens. I mean, it happened. It doesn't happen, but it happened. So, you know, it joins the fleet of mythical stealth aircraft um, that I have going right now. 
and there will be uh, some more joining it, at least one more. What do you guys think? I'm definitely open to your comments, criticisms, whatever you have to say about it. So thanks for joining me on this project and this build. I will have lots more fun stuff coming up of all different types. Please help me spread the word about the channel. Get your friends, get your fellow modelers to check it out, subscribe, give me suggestions of what you want to see. I have so many projects that I want to do that I, I have videos in progress. Um, you know, videos that, that projects that are already in progress on the channel that need to be finished as well. But, um, cool stuff that I think is cool anyway going on. So keep joining me for more. Uh, as long as you guys are watching, I'll keep cranking them out. So it's all keep building them, building them well, and I'll see you guys again soon.